Hey, my name is Amy and welcome to my channel, a place where I combine both my passion for running and for music. In today's video, I'm covering a topic that at one point or another, every runner will or has dealt with, and that is running injuries. Whether it's a minor strain, muscle soreness, tear, or even a break, injuries can be super discouraging because as runners, all we want to do is run, and you can't if you're injured. I'm going to cover common injury causes, how to hopefully prevent them, and what to do when you are recovering from an injury. Since running injuries is such a large topic and I can't hope to cover everything in one video, I'm going to be doing a part two next week. In this part two, I'm going to cover common running injuries, suggestions to recover from them, and advice to help prevent them from happening again. After watching, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a little note in the comments section, as both of these really help out my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at amy.spurcavney, where I post more running and music related things. So grab your phone or pen and paper and your favorite drink, and let's dive into part one of running injuries. Injuries can be really discouraging, but they also give us a time to reflect and learn. We first have to ask ourselves a few questions. Why did it happen in the first place? What could we have done to prevent it? How can we avoid it from happening again? And any contributing factors that led to it? For example, natural biomechanics, overuse, sudden increases in training, lack of strength training, not doing enough mobility, or just not warming up and cooling down properly before or after your run. The main point I have is that pain does not equal gain. Pain is just the way your body tells you that something's not quite right. Recently I became a little complacent in my post run stretches and cool downs and just not doing enough uh, mobility as well and I developed this really tight band in my leg or more like my thigh or inner thigh. I was very good and listened to my coach, thank you Eric, and he suggested to reduce the kilometers I ran the rest of the week. It was really hard to do as I just wanted to go out and run and just follow my training plan. However, it was really good that I caught this early on and that I didn't develop into something much worse. Now the pain is gone, thankfully. Honestly, it was just a really good reminder that I can't become complacent and that even if I'm feeling good after a run or just in general, that's the time that I really need to do mobility, strength training, stretches, warm ups and cool downs and not ignore that. Again, we have to be really proactive as runners even when we're feeling good because as soon as we're in pain, it's kind of too late. When should you stop running? We first need to learn the difference between pain from exertion and pain from an injury. If you're in pain after or even during your run and it's over say a 4 out of 10, maybe that's a sign that something's not quite right rather than just being, you know, working really hard and being sore from that. Non-localized pain and muscle soreness and stiffness is completely normal, especially after doing a really hard run or workout and just it's just normal to be a little sore afterwards. However, sharp pain or swelling could be an indication of an injury. If you have to change your gait because of the injury or just soreness, then that's a really good sign that you shouldn't run. Again, our instinct is just to run through the pain and just hope that it goes away, but often that's not the case. Most likely it's going to turn into something much worse and you'll have to take a longer break than a couple days, maybe even months. And as runners, we just want to run. And we don't want to get stopped by an injury. There are several factors that contribute to an injury, and a few are your natural biomechanics. It's really important to know what your body's kind of natural tendencies are, whether it's uneven hips, or your feet tend to overpronate or underpronate when they hit the ground, as well as one leg may be shorter than the other, you have weaker ankles that are more prone to rolling. You can address these issues before they become an injury, as most injuries are from overuse, and you kind of use your body in an imbalanced way, that could result in an injury. One thing that might really help you prevent getting injuries is getting proper fitting shoes and shoes that fit your specific needs. Whether you need a more stability shoe that prevents you from over pronating or under pronating or just getting a more neutral shoe especially if you have a natural or just neutral pronation. Stability shoes helps offset excessive pronation or even under pronation. Excessive pronation can actually result in overuse injuries like Achilles tendonitis, shin splints, runner's knee or ITB syndrome. Poor running form can also contribute to running injuries. For example, if you run hunched over and off balance, or if you overstride or understride, or if you have a weaker core, these could all result in imbalances which then lead to overuse injuries. Our body can make adjustments, but over time, if you use your body incorrectly, it's going to wear down and eventually break down and result in an injury. Another reason you're getting injured is because of a training error. Our body needs time to adjust to the stress and demands of running, and if you just suddenly increase your 
kilometers, say you run 10 kilometers a week and then suddenly increase it to like 80 kilometers a week, your body doesn't have the proper time to recover and just get used to it and you will probably get injured. As well, if you suddenly change running shoes that have different heel offset or heel drops, that could result in an injury. A heel drop or heel offset is the drop in midsole height between the heel and forefoot. More cushioned shoes have a higher heel drop. Lastly, not incorporating enough recovery. I've said this before in my recovery video, but it's really important to give your body time to recover from the stress you're putting on it. It is important to put some stress on your body because that's how we improve, but it's also important to remember to give our body time to repair itself. Otherwise, you can burn out, get injured, and just lose your enjoyment for running. I found it really interesting in my research for this video is that men are more prone to certain injuries as well as women are more prone to injuries. Though it's not just limited to those genders, it's just more prevalent. Studies that have been done, men are more prone to getting injuries in their feet and their ankles and sometimes their shins, while women are more prone to getting injured in their hips and knees. So I wondered, why is that? A few reasons I found, though there's many more reasons that I just didn't, I'm not covering in this video, but for women, they have wider hips, which kind of alters the alignment of their hips and knees. That could be one of the reasons why we're more prone to getting injured in our hips and knees. For men, it's the Achilles tendon. I have a lot of male running friends who've had Achilles injuries. Research has shown that even though guys have a larger Achilles tendon, it's not as flexible as a female Achilles tendon. And this lack of flexibility could result in tears or even ruptures. Mm, not good. Okay, so we've learned why we've become injured. Now, how do we prevent it? I highly recommend keeping track of your training by either writing it down in a journal or on your phone in an app. I'm gonna do another video about my training log, so don't forget to check back for that video. But basically, it can help you keep track of how you're feeling before or after you run. If there's any areas that have been sore more recently or just more repeatedly, you can kind of keep an eye on those areas. As well, you can see if you've taken any recovery days and if you see maybe in a week you haven't taken a day off, maybe it's time to do some recovery or just cross training. Having your training log in front of you just really helps you be aware of how you're feeling and just your training in general and just to know when to pull back or take a recovery day. For natural biomechanics that are causing injuries, I would strongly suggest seeing a professional like a physiotherapist that can help you kind of identify what's causing this imbalance or just areas or ways to improve it or strengthen it or just your running gait in general. You can even get your running gait checked out by a professional and they can see how you move and maybe give you suggestions on how to improve a certain area as well as your running form. Which brings me to running form. Having a poor running form can strongly be tied to running injuries. I would suggest incorporating running drills at least twice a week to reinforce proper running form. I'll have the link to the video where I talk about running drills in the description below, so feel free to check that out. Strength training is super important in becoming a stronger and more resilient runner. I've said this before, but doing at least two to three days of strength training will have huge benefits in your running. I get it, it can be super hard to also do strength training when you're running a lot and you're at high mileage and you're just so tired from it. But just even doing 10 to 15 minutes of specific like core or just overall body strength will help work against those imbalances that you create when you run and just strengthen up your muscles so you become more resilient and just a stronger runner and hopefully not get injured. Mobility affects how you run, and if you have poor mobility, it will negatively impact how you run. Now, mobility is not to be confused with flexibility. Mobility requires strength and coordination. Lack of mobility comes in different areas, but mostly is seen in your ankles and your feet, your knees and your hips, which are all the areas that we tend to get injured in. Is there a correlation? Maybe. A few ways to work on mobility is foam rolling and specific exercises and drills. Runners who have good mobility have a higher upward knee drive, really good hip extension, and proper activation of the glute muscles. Foam rolling is another way to prevent injuries. As I just said, it helps with mobility as it gets rid of the knots that form between the fascia and your muscle, which reduces your flexibility and mobility. As well, it helps promote circulation, which helps you recover faster. Another way to prevent injuries is doing yoga or some sort of stretching routine. It's really important to warm up your muscles and just your body in general before you do any hard workout or just running in general. This way your body is able to move more freely and there's just no stiffness and tightness. Doing a post run cool down and stretches is also important as it just brings your heart rate down and kind of flushes out the toxins and lactic acid in your legs or body that's built up and just kind of stretches out your muscles so you don't kind of tighten up or seize up either. I can really tell when I don't do a proper cool down as my muscles are just 
just tighter and stiffer than usual. I also like to do yoga before bed as it kind of calms down my mind and gets my body to stretch out and get rid of any tight spots as well that's built up over the day and gets me ready to sleep. I know I've said this before, but running drills will help prevent injuries. Having a poor running form is one of the major reasons for getting injured. I find running drills really good because it helps me focus on certain aspects of my running form, whether it's my knee lift action or lifting my heels or just being aware of activating my glutes. It's all things that you don't have a lot of time to think about or mental space to think about when you're doing a speed workout or just running in general. Doing drills just gives you that time. I challenge you to do at least two times a week of running drills. Let me know in the comment section if you do this and what you found the most helpful by doing running drills. What to do when recovering from an injury? First off, when in doubt, seek professional medical help. They're trained professionals and they can help you with exercises for your specific injury. However, if you're certain it's only a minor injury and that you just need a few days of rest or just to back off from your running, these are a few things you can do. Ice and heat. I really recommend if you have a tight spot on anywhere on your leg to use ice first. Ice helps reduce the blood flow to the affected area which helps reduce swelling and actually gets rid of some of the pain. It's recommended that you don't put the ice directly on your skin but have something in between. As well if you're using ice be super super careful that you don't get frostbite. Experts say to hold it no more than 20 minutes on a specific spot but I usually only do 10 minutes or so. Again you can alternate using heat after you ice for around maybe 10 minutes or no more than 20 minutes. Same rules apply don't put it directly on the area but have some sort of kind of cloth in between so you don't burn your skin. It just relaxes my muscles and makes it feel nice but I really do find that the ice works the best in regards to swelling and just reducing pain. You can alternate doing ice and heat daily if you need to. Though after a few days of doing ice and heat it doesn't get any better, I would definitely seek professional help. It's also a good idea to elevate the specific area that's hurting. This reduces the blood pooling in that extremity or wherever it is in your leg as well as circulates new oxygenated blood which helps with recovery. You can also use compression socks and bandages to reduce swelling and to limit tissue damage. Another thing is to keep moving. Now you don't want to overuse your damaged tissue, but you don't want to stop moving either. When possible, you want to keep moving to maintain strength and your range of motion. Pain avoidance movement patterns can become habitual and can eventually affect your running gait and cause more injuries. Not what we want. Going for walks is a nice way to keep your body moving and it's low impact and it gets you outside. I can't stress enough the importance of sleep in recovery. Sleep is vital in our body's recovery process and it also just gives you a time to kind of just catch up on that sleep, especially if you're doing a lot of early morning runs or late runs, and just gives you that time to recover. As sleep is super important for recovery, it might be a good idea while you're recovering from an injury to kind of skip maybe a few early morning um, cross training sessions and just focus on getting some sleep. Cross training is also a really good idea for when you are recovering from an injury. I've heard a lot of good things about pool running. Though I haven't pool run myself, this year I started doing laps in the pool. I'm not very good, but it's made a huge impact on my breathing and just my upper body mobility and just I feel stronger too. Cycling is also very good for cross training as there's no impact and it gets you outside and it's still a good workout and gets your heart rate up. As I said before, walking is also great. Now you still have to be super careful when you're doing cross training not to aggravate and make your injury worse. You can always ask your physiotherapist about exercises that you can do. And finally, strength training. Again, I cannot highly recommend enough incorporating strength into your week. Strengthening your muscles and your joints makes you a stronger, less injury prone runner. I also feel like I can run faster and longer distances because my muscles are strong from doing strength and they don't tire out as quickly. Recovery tools. These are a few of my must have recovery tools if you run or if you exercise. Muscle creams. These are the best. They're so great to put on sore muscles after long runs or just speed workouts or tempos or just in general. I like to especially put these on before bed as it doesn't get on my clothes and then I just sleep and let it do its magic. The first one I have is Medicine Professional Dual Action and it says relief for pain and inflammation and it's made in Canada. I'm almost out of this so I need to order more. It's not slimy and it has a really nice smell to it. I don't know, they all smell the same but it's not too too uh, strong. Voltaren is just good to have in general. It doesn't smell and absorb very quickly and it doesn't, it's not slimy or anything and it works really well. So I highly recommend. I also sometimes use A535, which is odorless and again, not sticky. Though I think I prefer using the Voltaren or the stick first before this A535. I just find these a little more effective. Body lotion is really good to have. This is my beauty counter kind of uh, body lotion, but it's just uh, to help you if self-massage. Self-massaging is a good way to just kind of take time for yourself and also just kind of work on those specific areas that are, might be a little tender. This just helps your hand kind of move over smoother so it's not so rough against your muscles and just kind of, and it feels good too. And 
smells very nice. A leave is also really good to have. I've lost the cover somehow and I'm almost out, but it's been really helpful. It says it relieves joint and arthritis pain, but it also is really good for muscle soreness. I don't take it all the time, but I find if my muscles are especially sore, it works really well. My handy lacrosse ball is also really good in kind of loosening up those tight bands. The handy ice pack and the good old magic bag. I have two of these. One's kind of a tube. This one's more for around your shoulders, but it's also good for kind of wrapping around your leg and getting at specific areas. These are just really good to have for your lunches and for your body. Another tool that you can use for recovering from injuries are compression socks or compression calf sleeves, like these ones. These help with swelling and inflammation. As well, they promote good circulation of reoxygenated blood, which helps stimulate repair and recovery. Injuries give you the time to reflect and appreciate the things you've learned from being injured and about yourself and running in general. And how can you approach your training and recovery differently that will help you prevent and reduce the injuries that you get? We should always strive to learn more, whether it's more strength training exercises, mobility exercises, or just ways to recover better. We should never become complacent because that's when we're more prone to getting hurt. Being injured is not only hard physically, but also mentally. Coming back from running after an injury, especially if you've had to take time off, can be really hard as you just feel like you've lost all your fitness. Even if you are starting over from scratch, you can use this time to become a stronger runner and be less prone to being injured, which is a win-win in general in my books. Now don't forget to check back next week for part two of this running injury series, where I go into more detail about common running injuries and how to prevent those and how to come back from specific injuries. Or you can simply hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, which will notify you when I upload a new video. Cheers to staying injury free and I'll see you next time.